Well, it's been a great time for us to get together. Let's thank him for being in our midst. Now, if you're from Maine, stand up. All right. Thank God for Maine. Lord, we decree Maine will experience an awakening in Jesus' name. Amen. New Hampshire, Connecticut, and Vermont, if you're here. Anyone from those three? Father, we ask you right now to break through in New Hampshire. And Father, we thank you for an incredible uh, transformation in Vermont. And Father, we thank you for Connecticut and how you're going to have a river rising in that state. In Jesus' name, amen. Just amazing. Massachusetts. Is there anyone here from Massachusetts? She had to leave. She left. She just left. Father, we send forth this work. Oh, there you are. Awesome. We send forth healing into Massachusetts. We thank you for a healing move of the Spirit in Massachusetts. In Jesus' name. Now, I saw something uh, while we were worshiping, right before we did the video. And it was a path that formed. And it formed from Trenton to Philadelphia to D.C. and then to Charleston, South Carolina. I mean, it's a strange path. If you represent any of that area, stand up. Uh, the Lord says this is going to be the path of recovery. It's going to begin to, I'm going to move along this path, and there will be a divine recovery and divine uh, worship sound that follows along this path. So I say to you, invite me to come, and I will follow you as you go forth on this path, and then by the time you get to Charleston, you will be able to reverse that which tried to defy a nation. Whoa, build the Spirit of God on that. See, there is an anointing of timing that we need to enter into. Let's thank God for Joshua. But wasn't he just a real blessing? Very seldom do you run into a younger individual that really has the word put together in their inner being like he does. And so it's just great to experience him being here with us. And um, it was great to experience that angel showing up last night. Uh, first time I ever saw an angel, I was 12 years old, and we were uh, on a highway by my grandparents' house, and uh, my brother stepped out into the highway, and it was a car coming, and I thought, here was my exact thought, I remember, I'm, my mother is going to kill me for letting him get killed. That was my first thought. That, that was really what came through my mind. And all of a sudden, a person showed up and pulled him off the road. And once he was pulled off the road, there was no person. So I knew an angel had saved him. Of course, an angel had to be assigned to him to be keep him saved. Uh, but it was really uh, one of those experiences you never forget. You knew only an angel could have done that. 
Another time that I experienced uh, an angelic help was in Galveston, Texas, where uh, my uh, we were in a very tense moment. I, I don't share a lot of the details of things I went through growing up. Uh, and I had to throw my sister out of a second story uh, hotel room. And when I, and then I jumped out and it was to save our life. And uh, when I got there, a car pulled up, and we just got in the car. And it took us to the police station. But it wasn't a policeman, even though it appeared to be a policeman. And I knew an angel had shown up to take, to keep us alive really interesting. Uh, and then we were having this incredible move of God in 1989 in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And uh, they, Santa Fe is a, one of the most unique cities in America, and it is uh, very occult and, and, and really a strange environment and uh, I was assigned there uh, the pastor that was there had worked with me in, in the Soviet bloc countries and he took a sabbatical so I went there for six months to take his uh, church and the spirit of God broke out I think there were 40 people when we got there when I left there were 600 and it was standing room only it was just an amazing amazing but one night when I was ministering, this angel showed up on this side of the room. And you have to get to know angelic presence. And especially as we go in to these next four years, we must no angelic presence and that how they will lead and guide us. You won't always see them. Uh, I've never, I, Trisha mentioned praying to angels. I've never even had a thought about that. Angels are sent to assist us, to bring us messages, to direct us, to protect us. You don't have to even think about praying to angels because when you cry out to the Lord, he is going to send help. And they're part of his messenger help for us. And this angel showed up, and when people started coming forward at the altar call, they could only make it to like halfway down the aisle, and all of a sudden they would just be thrown across the seats and when people would come down here on this side nothing would happen to them so I said there is an angel standing here on this side and he's here to meet your needs the entire is probably about three or four times bigger than what we are in here the entire group shifted to that side and I mean it was just a free-for-all crazy experience. Uh, I don't, I wouldn't even know how to describe that experience that night other than it was beyond human reasoning. That's the way to describe it. And so we are entering into times for angelic visitation. Uh, tomorrow we'll be focusing a little more on harvest and the working of angels and how angelic help is being sent to us for now uh, to redirect the movement of the church. And that becomes really important for us. Now, I also have another count of an angelic visitation in Passover prophecies uh, where uh, the... Uh, war angel over harvest came and visited me and uh, 
I don't know what that angel's name was last night, but I believe it's linked with crossroads. I, I do believe some way or another because that had been said and then the Spirit came in here while we were praying in the Spirit. And I explained what this harvest angel showed me that now is beginning at this Feast of Tabernacles. And I explain it like this visitation was almost three years ago. And, uh, but it was for now. That's something else I want to encourage you in. Things we're doing now will manifest. Things you have done in the past They will not go by the wayside. They will manifest. Because, see, once we get in the anointing of God's timing, all of a sudden we start recognizing his movements around us. Now, this is real key for us. And I knew this meeting had been ordained by him. That's one of the things that he has redone in my life. You know, I could have a stack of, of, of things, of invitations, and go speak, but since I've always been very cautious about being at the right place at the right time, but since COVID, it has become a new way of life, that when we gather, we must be gathering in his timing, because we wear out of here the anointing of timing. And that's what one of the things I'm going to send you out with today. You're going to wear out of here a new part of your mantle is going to be like a clock ticking. And you're going to know, turn this way or turn that way or go here or do this. Uh, it's going to be very, very key for us. Uh, for instance, I was headed to speak in Washington, D.C., uh, not yesterday, but the day before. And I told Chad the day before, I said, I don't have a message for Washington, D.C. I, I don't have one now. And I know prophetically, I'm not the type that's just going to go give a message just because I can give a message. I said, I do not have that. God will have to intervene, but I also don't control my own life either. And anybody that has ever traveled with me know that knows that. And so we just kept going. I said, we'll just keep going. We got on the plane, and they said, we've got a little minor uh, uh, mechanical problem. should be fixed in five minutes. An hour and a half later, they canceled the flight, and it was too late for us to get another flight to make it to D.C. And so I just went back and sent a message to uh, the pastor of what God wanted to encourage him with. But there are certain territories that we're going to have to move with angelic help if we're going to see the things you've prayed for those territories unlocked. Now that's very, very key as we move into this next season. It's not uh, part of a prayer movement. That's not what we're in anymore. Because we were stirring up prayer, we were praying, but now what's happening is there's this divine connection that's going on between heaven and earth, and that's why our steps must be timed. And when we step in, something's going to happen. And so, I've got some great books out there that will help you on timing. It, it, it is a special anointing that you have to, I want to say this right, you almost have to practice it with the Lord. Where you get used to that anointing of not being in time. See, if you'll get used to when you're not in time, you'll know when His presence is so on you and you are in time. See? It's just as important you recognize when you're not in time, even when you're going to the grocery store, as it is when you are in time. 
And so these are different days that we're having to understand things like this. So I do want to say there will come a time where you'll worship in Trenton, you'll worship in Philadelphia, you'll worship in D.C., worship in Charleston, and then there will be a reversal of division in this land. And it will come that route. I don't... Lord, I'm, I'm not sure why. I've, I've, the glory came one time in Trenton for us. So I know there's a glory realm there that has never fully fallen. So uh, it's some reason that God has that path historically for to reactivate. And so, and, and to go that route with it. Uh, to reverse division in this nation. Now, I want to be sure we understand the timing. I want us to be able, I like to interact with pictures so you can see exactly some of the things that Joshua was saying. See, this is a great picture of this year. We're building the house for the future. What you're doing right now is setting a course for the next seven years. And you're going to build, and the word build means several things, but it means to add sons and daughters too, but it actually means to set up a framework that you're reinforcing until you are steady. And a good way to think about this is, the three little pigs this year. Are, are you building with straw? Are you building with sticks? Are you building with bricks? How are you building so you reinforce yourself against the wind of the adversary? That's another way to think about this. And so I believe this was a very key that we had this meeting because you finally have a new place you're building from. And that's, that's key. I, I think this fully represents what this looks like. Um, and we've been going through the similar thing. Now, future means expected end. See, what the enemy's trying to rob from us most times, why he's he doesn't play fair with you, so never think he plays fair. There's a great book out there called Time to Defeat the Devil. He will never play fair with you. Do not ever fall into a trap thinking he will leave you alone and not pray f- play fair. If you have an ounce of anointed, now say out loud, I am anointed. He will never play fair with you. And so what he's trying to do is to get you out of time or get you uh, legalistically encased in a smaller boundary than God intends you to be. He uses time and law. See, that's why religion is so important for us to recognize because religion it has so much law in it it becomes an occult force in the earth against you and so he is attempting to make sure you don't have a future because God knows that see he's the same yesterday today and forever so That's why the enemy wants you to never get out of yesterday or never forgive anything that's gone on in your past because then you can't ever get into your future. Or the enemy wants you to get bound up in the present just today and you're going to end up not seeing your path ahead. Because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That means he is past, present, and future. And how God works, he has you stand in the moment. He'll bring your past, Trenton, 
up to you and say, we're going to bring what Trenton experienced into the moment, and then we're going to cast what goes on there when heaven and earth align with it into the future. See, and, and then we're going to attach it with Philadelphia, and we're going to move what was there into the future, move that to Washington, D.C. Then we're going to move that from there into Charleston. And uh, it's going to break a power of division because your worship is going to recreate the atmosphere and the earth realm of where things never did fully manifest. And so that's how God is working. So what happens is people of promise have a tendency to postpone. I lo- Go ahead, Chad. I loved what uh, uh, Joshua said because this was my first slide for you. He said, he, because he spoke to me uh, yesterday and he said, the 13 original colonies cannot postpone any longer the fullness of my plan. And so that becomes important for you. And people have promised we're the worst to fall into that. We want to keep saying, well, maybe next year that will happen. And the Lord did something with me several months ago. He took me to uh, Matthew chapter 9, or Luke chapter 9, and it says, uh, lift up your eyes into the harvest and don't say this is four months from now. Lift up your eyes and see now. And the Lord really dealt with me for two or three days over seeing now so we could propel ourselves into the future and not postpone what he wants to happen. And he said we can be just like Elijah. We can postpone the future. And that's what happened when Elijah saw what God Jezebel sent toward him. It was a demon host. And he actually saw the demon power that was going to kill him. And so he ran. Well, that postponed what God... And there was no one greater than Elijah. But it postponed what God was trying to do for almost 14 more years. That's what happens, and that's what we can't keep doing in America, is postponing what God wants to do. And I think the enemy is working with us to use uh, use, uh, uh, America to postpone what God's trying to do, Therefore, we lose this anointing, and it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. And God is telling his people, you have to rise up now. And it has to start the way I intended it to start. And that's this original 13 colonies. That's why you become so important in this next move of God doesn't mean that the spirit won't fall but there's something about you activating roots that can just be recovered throughout the entire United States and when that happens you'll see the power of postponement coming because remember the Lord finally Elijah wanted to die so he was ran he really didn't want to die or he'd let Jezebel kill him you know you have to you have to know that in your crisis, you're coming up with some crazy thoughts. And if he had really wanted to die, he would have just stood there and took, taken Jezebel on. But he ran because he didn't want to die. And when the Lord finally was able to break through, and he was looking for the Lord in everything he could look through, and finally that still small voice came. And he said, no, you're going to go back, and now you're going to have to anoint three people to do what I intended you to do last week. And we're going to have to wait till their anointing comes into timing. So, 
all the mess that Jezebel and, oh and Ahab could have been taken out from last week, now it's going to have to, it, it's just going to continue to multiply in the earth over the next 14 years. We do that. Those are the type things that I think the Lord is dealing with us on right now. And he's getting us into a place where we're cohesively understanding his time so we do not choose. I, I thought about New Jersey. Isn't New Jersey coming up for some election soon? It's very key this time. Because you have to understand the word, I was sharing this on one of Stephen Strang's programs. Visitation means how we vote, we get visited. That's what the word actually means. We're choosing our visitation in the earth, our being overseen in the earth. The word is linked with overseeing. We're choosing how we're being overseen based upon the way we vote on things. And nobody has ever, I am not, uh, I want to say this right, I'm not a uh, real political type. I don't trust big government. I didn't trust big governments in the late 60s, in the early 70s. I haven't seen a whole lot different in this last season than what we saw in the 60s and 70s. And because of that, God is saying, I want to get you to a place where my government is able to move and say a word and cause government to align. Now, to do that, we're going to have to be delivered of a lot of stuff in the body of Christ. We're going to have to get past our Judas syndrome you know, Judas had one goal. It was to get Jesus to help get elected who he wanted elected. You are aware that was what was Judas's demise. He was political. He wanted to see Jesus support his political leanings. I'm sure he was religious. I'm sure he prayed. I'm sure he did all of that. But he wanted Jesus to support that so he could change the leadership of civil government. And when Jesus said, but I'm here for a kingdom, I'm not here for that. When Jesus did that, Judas shifted and turned against him. And God's going to have to get us to a place where we know that we are speaking what needs to happen, and we're doing our part as citizens, but we are not doing it from a political realm, we're doing it from a kingdom realm that is anointed, and the anointing will break the yoke. And so we're we will have to come into a place where we see that. And with that, we'll have to know the mind of Christ. I do not know why I gain, I have strange vis visitations when I come to New Jersey. I mean, half of my life has been a strange visitation in New Jersey, like last night. But it said, Chad said, why does this happen to you every time you come up here? I said, I do not know. But all I know is when the anointing, yeah, that's what I said. I said, it's an anointing, and when the anointing leaves, I want to get under the bed somewhere, you know. There is some peculiar anointing in this state that allows us to see the entire nation. I mean, for the Lord to show me in 2008 our nation where it was and then to play it out step, and he showed me that at Liberty Park here, and play it out step by step, even to the point where Donald Trump would become president, but even in that vision where it, that would only last three years. Now, that's, and that's really what happened. 
there is something that is accessed from this portal called Jersey that is capable to change the entire course of the way this nation operates. Now, and that's why you're being pulled from the other 13 original colonies into this portal so when you're sent out, you are capable of making sure your tent peg is in place for an entire nation. Now, so Elijah, remember, he had to anoint uh, uh, Haziel, who was evil people. God anointed Haziel, who was evil. He had to anoint Jehu, which was one of the biggest I mean, think about it. He told all of Jezebel's people he had shifted over to Baal worship and got them all to follow him, got them into a place and killed them all. Didn't bother him at all what he had done. God will use people that we wouldn't particularly use. (laughs) And then he anointed Elisha who had a double portion of Elijah's power, and he was different from Elijah. So, we are headed into a threefold new anointing cord. Now, that's what we want to end up with while we are here in this portal. I think that's why God brought us here to anoint you new and fresh and for you to take that anointing out and move it in all of your sphere of authority. Now, I want you all to say this. The new is now. now. (laughs) That means you are stepping into a change realm, a dimension that is putting something totally on you that will make you a better quality than what you have ever been. It's causing you to have ideas that may never have been. And so, it's important because we're living in a new era in a new land. Now, just look around here. This is a new era for your particular walk that you have walked with the Lord. And you're in a new land here. And this portal's different from that portal down there because I went down there yesterday. And all, and see, every nation right now, uh, nation, why it's important that we keep looking at nations is because that's God's inheritance in the earth. He says that in Psalms. And so, nations are in the valley of decision. Not all nations will end up being in God's redemptive book. He showed me 153 in the book, Uh, but not all nations will. I can go back and look at uh, Future War of the Church, which was written in 2000, And it said the nation we will have to watch that best represents Antichrist is Afghanistan. And if there's a nation that could be the demise of the United States, it would be Afghanistan. That was in 2000. And I said, how you tell uh, how you're able to discern that is not just by the spirit. You watch how a nation treats women. And how a nation treats women is how strong Antichrist dwells in that nation. And those is, that's how he will weed out the goat nations. They will treat women very badly. And, uh, and we're a much better nation than what we think here. We, we can find all of our faults, but... 
we still have a lot going for us. Let's thank God for that. But you're going to start seeing nations come to the forefront. Now, in that, I have written four books that explain China. China will have another wonderful gift for us within the next three years. And don't try to rationalize this. You can't have a virus cover the world in a week time and be in 185 nations. Even viruses don't work like that. And they had that thing packaged, planned, and sent because God said in 1986, in 2020, they make their next move economically to rule the entire, be the strongest ruler economically in the world. They will also make another uh, shift by 2024. So we're going to have to get a little wiser as God's people and not just, here's something I don't want us to end up doing. God doesn't do anything that we're supposed to do. Don't, don't think God will just, just cause we're precious will take care of us. That is not what, we're, we're not down here just cause we're precious. And this becomes really important for us because the Lord, that's why John will be here after Armageddon is over. <laughs> Some of us end up being like that. I mean, we don't, we're not the type that's just going to be poofed out, you know. He's training us to withstand what is ahead. And listen, that's what I want to tell you over the next three years. We will be trained as a body. We will be very clear. We will know and have a level of discernment we've never had before. We will not be tossed to and fro. We will be filled with a love that is beyond comprehension. Therefore, we won't uh, judge the Chinese, just because we know their government has a wrong motive. We won't judge because of the color of skin or the orientation of the root system of our inheritance. We're, going, we're in a big change right now that we're going through, and we will judge people by the Spirit, but we will know who la is laboring among us. Now, this becomes very, very key for us. Now, because, see, the enemy is bringing us into this incredible, go ahead, uh, this incredible new level of wisdom and new revelation. We're moving from just what we knew into a level of uncovering things we didn't know. And that's what revelation does. All of a sudden, you just get something, and it uncovers what you couldn't understand. And I keep going back to Trenton. There is something where Trenton has uh, political authority from the beginning that is great, greater than Washington, D.C. Now, you need to uncover that. The capital three times? Have we ever dealt with that here? Y'all prayed about it. You're going to have to go up a notch with it. That is very key. Now, I knew York was the capital. I knew Philadelphia was the capital. I knew you, New York was the capital at one time. Trenton was capital three times. Now, but, but that doesn't matter. Queen for a day, I'm telling him. God's, God's doing something with that to start a whole new movement that changes the course of this nation that needs to be completed over the next year. And so we'll get in on that. Now, with that, what Satan is trying to do is to keep you from uncovering him. And that's what Revelation does. See, Satan, when Lucifer fell, he, 
He had rule over wealth. He had rule over sound. And it says in Ezekiel 28 that he uh, covered the earth with his rule. See, so that means he uses sound and wealth, and he still has these coverings over it. Well, that's what's being pulled off right now, the coverings off these things. Now, with that, let's move quickly, Chad, so we can get, get through this. Now, with that, we want to we know... Now, this is the first trip I've brought you on in ages. We don't, want new, we don't want the 13 colonies to fire you while you're here. Let's thank God for Chad. We miss him. He and I had to really go through some things. I mean, we had to really adjust since we had to adjust to being at home. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, seriously, now think about it. 300 days on the road, and then all of a sudden you're at home with 15 grandkids. <laughs> and all these kids that were one of the reasons I was on the road all that time. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a glorious, it really has been awesome getting to know my kids, watching the Lord recover time. And he always promised me that, that some way he would redeem the time I gave up. And he did it. Let's thank God for that. Yeah. I mean, I enjoy being more with my kids than being with anybody now. And, you know, I've gotten to know them, and I've watched each one come into the best that God has for them right now. Now, now with that, let's go back. We've come into a new era. Last year was about returning to... You're fine. You don't have to do any of that. Uh, I can just cover it this way. We're, last year, a leaf won. See, and remember in God's time, we're transferring from one, but we won't be fully transferred into two, even though we're in the transference right now until Passover. So you're going through this inner processing of moving from uncovering the power of the parent root that has never been uncovered. That's what one's about. And coming into a renewed new covenant in the new place you're at, in the new time you're at, And by Passover, we are now strengthened to build a house. But right now, we're starting on our homes. We're starting on the house. We're shifting into the next structure, our wineskin of what we're about. The 13 colonies should be shifting right now so that they know how to really advance into harvest by May of next year. See, you want to be thinking like this. You want to be thinking in your own life. Some of you, I was thinking about you, Kathy, when that first root that came up was a root of prosperity. You need to go back to understandings you've had about prosperity and say, okay, Lord, now how do I get into the next level of fruitfulness of prosperity? And I think the enemy, I don't know what's been going on with you, but the enemy's been set against you, not wanting you to prosper in a new way. But the Lord will connect that into a new level of prosperity. And so, with that, we have now, what this means is, it's time to build the church again. We have not even been in a church season we have ju- we're just transitioning into this church. So it doesn't mean we haven't had a church. 
it means that now we will take on the identity that God has for us for the future. And, and we'll be better than what we've been in the past. And we're not going to be bogged on what got weeded out in the last season. We're just going to say, this is what we have to build with. And this is how we're going to build. And we've got great ability to build for the future. Because two is linked. Bait is about building the house. But you always want to look from your own house right here. Because you, you have to remember, this is one of the great mysteries. God chose for you to be his house. And so, because of that, he's got to start doing something inside of all of us. Uh, for the next three weeks, Robert and I are going to be trying to help us understand how the root moves us into wholeness. Chad and I were just talking about it. Because we got to be whole. And he's got to be at home with us. The Bible says that. And so he's going to start with us, then he's going to move to us corporately, just like what we just experienced with communion. Then he's going to move with us territorially. And then we're going to start seeing the generations blend together. It's, a, it's amazing the, the paradigm we're on. And all through this, worship is going to be taking us into new places. And so, one of the things that I have seen is that because we're actually in this new era, in a new house, in a new uh, land, what is the war? See, look at this. Uh, Bethel is one of the key words for this year. How will we return to Bethel and experience Bethel in its fullness? So that's good for you to teach on. And uh, so with that now, we have to move into this land. Now let me give you a few keys for this new land that we're moving in. You know last night God opened a revelatory window. You have to keep that revelatory window open. The moment the Lord speaks something to you, grab hold of it. Don't keep waiting for Him to speak. Just grab hold of what He said. And then you'll move from there. And before long, your window is huge. And your window of revelation is defining your sphere of authority. Now, that's an important statement that I just made. Then, in the midst of what you are doing, recognize harvest moments. Recognize, lift up your eyes and see, for the harvest is now recognize harvest moments. You might be at the grocery store. Take Holy Spirit with you. Take Holy Spirit with you. Be more aware of Holy Spirit in whatever you are doing. And He will cause you to recognize harvest moments. Uh, I've had times recently where I've looked at someone, and, and you know, you have discernment. You can see evil, and you can see good, and you can see angels. And I've said, Lord, please send somebody to that person over there. And the Lord said, I, you're here. <laughs> I will tell you one interesting, you've noticed a young man at times, he's, I've known him now for eight years, that will be up front if you watch the web. Where that young man came from was we were visiting San Antonio. Pam and I, Pam was with me. This was probably eight years ago. And we were in a parking lot 
And this young guy walked across the parking lot. And my wife looked at me, and she does not do this often. She said, the Spirit of God just told me that you have to bring him into the kingdom. We were in San Antonio. Or else he will die and be in hell. Now, we're having this thing which anytime, we're not as bad as John and Cheryl, but we can have great discussions publicly. Yeah, yeah, I've matured some. I knew God had spoken to her. And I went over and said, my wife told me, you have to come to know the Lord. Uh, that was exactly what I said. My wife told me, you have to come to know the Lord. And he said something very ugly. That's not really appropriate for an awesome place like this. <laughs> and I know it's New Jersey and Texas can be pretty raunchy too. But uh, I said, I will be following up on this. I kept following up with him. And three years ago, he called and he said, I have to come know the Lord. I mean, he said, I have to come to know the Lord. And he was in a very difficult place. And he very seldom now does not worship on Sunday. And he came to know the Lord. And I had Keith baptize him three times before we let him out. <laughs> we wanted to be sure he had been dunked down. <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about, harvest moments. Don't miss why in the world she would have seen that guy. In San Antonio. Now he lives in Dallas. But she saw him in San Antonio. And if she hadn't seen him, I would have never had the heart nor the desire to obey the Lord like that. And yet, that's what I'm talking about. That's a harvest moment. Here's something else. Shabbat is very key for us. Shabbat is what's going to produce the healing move of God. Uh, Isaiah 58 says that. That if we don't get Shabbat, and I don't mean any legalistic thing, we're going to have to get where we learn there is a time. See, this is about time today. Where you have to look back at where you've come the last six days. Now, your Shabbat might be on Tuesday. I don't, I, I don't get into all that. But you're going to have to stop, reflect over seven, the last six days, and then let God reveal to you the next six days. That's really what Shabbat is. The easiest way to understand Shabbat, I've got several books that talk about it, is it's just a stop sign. You keep running your stop signs, and before long, you're going to have a crash. Now, that, that's just the easiest way to understand Shabbat. Shabbat is like a stop sign. Like, I have not taken Shabbat this week, but I will try to sometimes Monday. See, don't get legalistic that all of us have to shut down everything, and I don't at all be like Israel, they will stand in front of the elevator in Israel waiting till I push the deal and then I get tromp trompled with all of them getting on the it. That is called legalism. 
See, they can't even push the elevator button to get on the elevator. <laughs> and yet, they stand there saying, let this filthy Gentile pe <laughs> push it. Well, I will tell you, I don't think I'm going to go to hell by getting on an elevator. Uh, that is not Shabbat. Shabbat is where you remember where you've come from and what all you've gone through for six days. And then you adjust your course for the next six days. And let Holy Spirit do it. And if you do that, you're going to end up being healed. Your family is going to end up being healed. And I did it for eight years straight. And then through all of the ministry and travel, got out of the process and got r real sick. And that was what God dealt with me over. When he brought it up 20 years ago, I almost died 20 years ago. And it was, and I said, Lord, and Cindy Jacob said, this has something to do with your dad. And I thought, why in the world? I've written a whole book on restoring, uh, possessing your inheritance. And then Keith said the same thing on Sunday afternoon when I was getting ready to go back to the hospital. He said, this has to do something with daddy. I said, well, he was your daddy. Why don't you have sickness? <laughs> Why aren't you sick? He said, I didn't have any emotional connection with him. You have something you know about him that, the, that I don't know. And you have an emotional tie that you're going to have to redeem that he violated. And so I got down. I fell down on my face. I said, Lord, you have got to show me what this is. And all of a sudden, the Lord said, Forget not Shabbat. And then something happened. He, see, this is how he'll, he'll do with time. He flipped me back into the past. I had come home from church with a very godly aunt I had. And my dad came by. And she said these words to him. She said, um, I haven't seen you in church in Three years or so. He said, well, some people need to worship. Others of us need to work and make money. And all of a sudden, I got down and repented for him choosing that and that leading him astray and that being in our bloodline. And... And then, when that happened, the Lord showed me something I had done. I had given, uh, Pam and I came back, and there was, uh, Robert, uh, we had been gone for a couple of years from Denton. We came back, and they were in debt. And the Lord told us to take all of our money and give it to them, to get the church out of debt and get it back going in the way that the Lord wanted to go. And I did it, but I, I wasn't real excited about doing it. You know, because I had spent other times giving all our money away. I mean, and I'm talking about not little amounts. All of it. So, this is about nine months later, and I'm sick and really dying and uh, once I did that the Lord said to me and this is what I'm talking about revelation if you really want to come into this new season God can reveal to you what you need to know and the Lord said uh, remember when I told you to give that big gift uh, to help them get back on track I said yes and I obeyed you immediately he said yes you did this was in this time of year feast of tabernacles he said yes you did but you didn't do it with any joy you did it out of obedience with no joy and the joy of the 
of me is your strength, and you've lost all yours. I got up. I called. The Bible says call the elders, get them to pray for you, and you'll be healed. I called, and I said, y'all are going to have to come over. Three of the elders, Robert, Linda, and another elder came over. I'm laying on the floor, and I share with them just what I said. And I said, and you know, when I gave y'all that big gift, I, I didn't have a lot of joy. Robert said, well, it brought us a lot of joy. (laughs) It brought us so much joy that we can pronounce your healing now. (laughs) And all of a sudden, things started turning. All of a sudden, things started shifting from that moment forward. See, giving is linked with covenant, which is linked with love. And there's this joy in giving that sets our future in motion. Now remember that. If you are a little lost or at a stalemate, giving by His Spirit, is going to set things in motion for you. It's amazing what happens. Now, something else, and he was talking about it today. We have got to get into a place where we are in a different dimension of watchmen. I call it lookout intercession, and we're having to be able to see around the side of the building before we go around it. Now, that should apply real easy up here in New Jersey, where you want to know what's around on the other side of the building before you step around it and get knocked in the head. That's the type of intercession we're coming into. It's not praying about something you want to see happen. It's about saying... I already see what is there, and the Lord's saying, you're going to take it out before you ever get there. So we're getting really interesting. And one of the things I see you guys are doing here in in, uh, this movement that's going on from the 13 colonies is paths that grew back up, you're clearing them out again. Because, you know, we had lots of land, and we would clear entire fields and entire paths. Forty years later, the Lord uh, sent us back to the land. Finally opened it up for us to go back to the land that we had to leave. It was so grown up, you would have never known the effort that had been put in on it. Now, we're talking about hundreds of acres grown up, and there were fields cleared and paths all over that land. And that's what iniquity does. And I felt like last night that was really one, another one of the reasons I could see this so clearly was the Lord says, I'm getting ready to unlock the roots, and when the roots start moving up, you're going to see the paths that you need to take. The root becomes a route, and then you will route the enemy. I'm adding to it what John said, which I agree with. Now, and one thing I have done is go back to the early church over and over and watch and look at the instruction to that early church, and then see how they didn't do it. If you'll hear what the Spirit is saying, you will overcome. Not a one of them overcame. And so then the Lord tells John, come up here. Come up here. I want to share this with you, and then I'm going to, I want to pray over So There's one other thing I need to share with you. Come up here, uh, and I'm going to show you things to come. 
This is where I really see we are starting now. We're coming up here. We're coming up to a place to look beyond anything we have seen built in the past. And it's all right to just do everything you know to do. But know this, you're going to be shown new pieces to add to your family house. You're going to be shown new pieces on how to add to your corporate gatherings. You're going to be shown new pieces on how to affect the territory. You're going to be shown an expansion of your sphere of authority. And so he told John, he said, now come up here. And John heard the sound of that shofar. Now whoever's got a shofar, I want you to just stand up right now wherever you are and loose the sound. The sound of the shofar. He said, I heard a sound like a trumpet. And all of a sudden, things started unfolding to let him see us today. Now that's what happened. All of a sudden, that sound in a moment went forward. And it unfolded the generations to come. John saw us. He saw this triumphant people that would arise today. Now this is what I want to leave you with. And then I'll have another impartation for you tomorrow. Look with me at Luke 19 for us to end with. Luke 19. See, we're having to say, I don't fully understand last season. I don't fully understand everything I've gone through. I don't fully yet see clearly exactly where I'm going. But at, I'm in God's moment, and I'm in his time, and in this celebration that we're in this week, which is Feast of Tabernacles, in this celebration we're in this week, uh, I know I'm in right timing, and I know I will see the house differently. I'll see my house differently. You'll see yourself differently. God might reveal to you things you've held on to that you didn't even know you were holding on to. He might show you how you're limiting him to move in your life in ways that only you know. Because really the first step is your identity. And we'll hit that again tomorrow. But in this moment, he's calling us into this place because the whole era we're in is about seeing him differently. So Jesus entered Jericho, was passing through it, and there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector, a superintendent to whom others reported, and he was very rich. There's a lot of wealth out there that the Lord's ready to bring into his kingdom plan. Zacchaeus was trying to see who Jesus was. But he couldn't see because of the crowd because he was real short in stature. He ran on ahead of the crowd. He climbed up into a sycamore tree in order to see him. For he was about to pass through that way. When Jesus reached the place, 
He looked up, and this is what you have to understand about Jesus. He already sees you. You might, he's calling us to a higher place. But really what he's doing is seeing, will you climb up there? Because he already sees you. He already knows you. He's just waiting to see how you're coming up like John or Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus didn't know him. John did know him. To really see into your future. He said, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down for today. I've got to go to your house. Now, that's really what the year's about. He has to come to your house. <laughs> now, it's a visitation year. He's coming to your house. He's coming to where you are. Your house here and your place. He, he's coming to visit the 13 colonies this year. He's coming. And he said, so Zacchaeus hurried down and welcomed Jesus with joy. Well, you know, have you ever noticed sinners sometimes are more excited about him than we who know him? That needs to change this year. When the people saw it, they all began muttering in discontent. They were mad because he was going to visit this sinner, this tax collector, this rich man. He's gone to be the guest of a man who is a notorious sinner. I love that, notorious sinner. Everybody say notorious. That's what the word means. Zacchaeus stopped and said to the Lord, See, Lord, I'm now giving half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anyone out of anything, I'll give back four times as much. Everybody say we're in the season of payback. And God's calling a lot of people up that doesn't know him that's going to be part of his payback. Because of what Zacchaeus was doing, Jesus said, today salvation has come to your house. Now listen to me. He does not think the same way we think. That they're going to all have to come up here and get down on their knees at the altar to get saved. That isn't how this harvest thing's going to work. He said, Zacchaeus, today salvation has come to your household because he too is... A spiritual son of Abraham, for the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost. I found you up trying to see beyond where you had ever seen before. And because I see you, that you're trying to see beyond a place that you have, had ever been able to see before, I'm ready to come visit you. That's my word for the 13 colonies. It's not about the past. Even though God says you're going to retrace some steps that never got brought into fullness. So you can bring everything that I want it to be seen into visibility. But I'm ready for you to see beyond a place you have ever seen before 
I am ready for you to go there. And I'm going to come to your house this year. Because starting today at Feast of Tabernacles, the 13 colonies are going to start rejoicing, worshiping, and seeing like never before. Let's stand up. Now, Father, this is 48 years for me coming up here during this time of year. That long. 48 years. I've come this month, every year, some way, for 48 years. My wife lived in New Hampshire. It was the first place we came when we made covenant. Now, you're getting ready to enter in, in the next three years, to a jubilee explosion of fulfillment from the 13 original colonies. Now, Father, right now, I loose this anointing. You just feel the anointing. You feel it coming down on you. I felt it in someone's left uh, hip right there. I mean, it just rested on your left hip. The Lord says the enemies tried to wound you and make you cripple over this last season. But this season, you're going to walk strong. And you're going to stand strong in a way you've never stood. Father, we receive this anointing for this season. We say it will go all the way. And Father, I, I know you and I know your voice. You said it will be unlocked as it finds its way from Trenton through Philadelphia through D.C. and down to. Charleston, South Carolina. Now, Father, I know some way there is some movement and journey that you're on and it's going to draw us up to seeing you come. Father, I thank you for visiting all 13 states starting now. Now, I'm telling you, get ready. There's a visitation in the air. There's a movement in the ground. The Lord says, get ready. Visitation is on, on the verge of visitation. He is moving. Paths are forming. Grounds will be shaking. Father, I thank you right now and I loose the anointing of timing to rest on everyone here. I say their steps will be timed. I loose the anointing to go higher into a place to see than they've ever gone. I loose it. And I say, Father, I loose an anointing where you want to visit our house. Father, we receive what you have done in this gathering. And we thank you right now. You are starting a process here to build a house that glory will be seen all over. And Father, for this house, I say you have started the next day of salvation and expansion for this particular move of God that we are now honoring you in, in this house, in Jesus' name. Let's give a shout and thank him for what he's doing. <laughs> 